Hello. Yes, sir. So, I'd like to talk about the Christine Andres murderer, Joseph Brown in 2007. I'd like to introduce it to you. There were wanted leaflets spread all over the country and he was in a location where no one could find him. How did Joseph Brown get away? I'd like to remember the incident step by step from the time it happened. In 2007, Joseph Brown was 28 years old that time. He had never worked in his life. He was living alone in his parents' apartment with such a self-defeating lifestyle. He was living by his life day by day. Late at night on March 20th, Brown happened to see a British woman in front of the station. Her name was Christine Andres. Brown walked up to her and said, Do you remember when I fixed your washing machine? But of course, it was a complete lie. And in response, Ms. Lindsay told him he had the wrong person. But Brown did not give up. I want you to teach me English so I can study art. I just want to drink water at your house. Lindsay is a very kind person, and she trusts Japanese people. Even though he was suspicious, she accepted it. She invited him in her house, where he shared a room with her friend, and gave him water. He asked her to teach him English conversation lessons. March 25th of the same year, English conversation lesson was held at a coffee shop. But Brown said he forgot his money for the lesson fee. He asked her to accompany him to his apartment for the payment. She agreed and went to Joseph's house with him. As soon as they arrived at the apartment, Lindsay was hugged from behind. But when she refused to accept it, Joseph's attitude suddenly changed. He became violent. He punched her several times. After beating her a few times, he tied her hands and feet together with a bandage and to beat her again. Then he puts her in the bathtub and tries to lock her up. However, Lindsay took advantage of the situation and called out for help. She tried to escape, but Brown became impatient and strangles her and kills her. Later, at a home improvement store he bought soil and deodorant. He put them in the bathtub with the body and left them on the balcony. He tried to destroy the evidence and planned to escape the day after the incident. Joseph, who had finished destroying the evidence opened the front door to go out. The moment he opened the front door, the policeman jumped out at him. The roommate of Ms. Lindsay called the police because she did not come home. She knows about the English lessons with Joseph. So, the police had come to question him. Joseph was so upset by this and when saw an opening and he tried to escape. He was a member of the track and field team in high school and was famous for his speed. He succeeded in escaping from six detectives. When he came back to his senses, he saw that his shoes were off and he was barefoot. Joseph's feet were covered in blood. So, went to a nearby garbage dump to get a pair of shoes and a jacket. Then he stopped at a convenience store to buy some sewing tools. Then he sneak into the bathroom of a nearby hospital with the sewing tools he purchased and performed plastic surgery on himself. Joseph thought that his nose was distinctive. He tied up his nose with a needle and thread it and changed its shape. At that time, Brown had only 50,000 yen in his pocket. He was so worried about his money that he repeatedly rode a transportation vehicles without paying. He moved to Saitama, Gunma, Ibaraki, Shizuoka, and Aomori. He moved to Nishinari, Osaka. He decided to work there. That was also the time that he performed his second self-induced plastic surgery which is thinning his lower lip. He cut off his own lower lip with scissors. However, when Brown found a his wanted poster in Nishinari, Joseph was so terrified that his work wavered. In the end, he gave up working. Then he came up with a crazy idea. If he went to a pilgrimage Ms. Lindsay might come back to life. Joseph, who had read the horror novel, Death Country, took a hint from the description in the novel. If you make many pilgrimages with all your heart. He sincerely thought that he might be able to bring Ms. Lindsay back to life remote islands and labor. Unlike the last time, Joseph used a simple concrete block hut as his base. He lived there in fear of noises and wild animals. When he ran out of food, he went back to Nishinari. He looked for a stay-in job. Whenever he feels that even the slightest hint of being exposed, he goes back to Oha Island. And so on. Joseph's fugitive life continued for a while after that. Two years and six months had passed since he escaped. However, thanks to the active activities of the bereaved family, the world has not forgotten about Joseph. 
As time went by, the investigation network was rather strengthened. There were many rumors about him, including that he frequently go to a gay bar in Shinjuku. He was once again getting a stay-in job. One day, when Brown came back to the dormitory, he found men in suits wandering around the dormitory. The police. That's what Brown thought, and he immediately left the place. After that, he plans to have his fifth surgery. He searched for a hospital where he could have the surgery at a reasonable price. He moved to a hospital in Nagoya, where he had a surgery to raise his eyebrows. However, the doctor who knew the information about Brown from the news report became suspicious of his past self-surgery scars. He reported him to the police. The police received the report. They stake out the hospital to ambush Brown when he comes to remove his stitches. However, on his scheduled checkup, Brown did not show up at all. Brown knew that the doctor had noticed him so that he didn't return to the hospital. He had removed the stitches by himself. Joseph's face is not the same when he committed the crime because of his past plastic surgery procedures he could get away with it. That's what he thought. But when he was watching TV at a business hotel in Fukuoka, and I saw a photo of my face before and after the surgery, I am in deep despair. I was told that the hospital in Nagoya where the plastic surgery was performed had handed over the information. After that, the reports of the plastic surgery continued day after day. Information came in one after another from all the places where Brown had lived and moved around. Fake names and his personal belongings or the traces of his life were exposed one after another. As his family and information continued to be made public Brown became impatient and tried to escape to Oha Island again. Since his alias is already known, he's already found out about the island from his computer's search history. Isn't it possible that they know about the island? That's what Brown thought, but he did not give up the idea of going to Oha Island. He went to the ferry terminal in Kobe. But unfortunately, the ferry was cancelled that day, so he took a taxi to the ferry terminal in Osaka, where he was told that there was a night ferry to Osaka. However, at that time Joseph was wearing two light clothes. The ferry terminal staff became suspicious and contacted the Osaka terminal at 3 p.m. Brown arrived at the terminal in Osaka. He went straight into the waiting room. He was told that the ship would leave at 10 p.m. He had about seven hours to spare. But he didn't move from his place. And it was the time that the officer who had been contacted took a closer look at him. They were convinced that he was Joseph. They called the police. The sun was setting, and tourists were beginning to gather for Okinawa. The fateful moment arrived. Can I have your name? This time, he did not resist and was taken into custody. It's been two years and seven months since the incident. Joseph's long, long escape from reality came to an end. In the subsequent trial, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Brown was imprisoned in Nagano prison. He's still serving his sentence. So that's it. This is what happened. Watch this video. I hope you get life imprisonment. If you think so, please rate us highly and subscribe to our channel and follow me on Twitter and sign up for Bellmark notifications if you want. The End